look, here's the black holocaust, I knew it was prophecy, a thousand times worse than your Jewish atrocities, uneven playing field, there'll never be a fair score, cause in 1619, that's when they declare war, we the 12 tribes, the ones that the promise reaches, my Negro... What's going on man, you got a question? What's your nationality? American. No, American. Do your family come from England or something? Uh, yeah. England. See that? Yeah. So real quick, man. So when your family came here from England, and not just your family in particular, but your people specifically, right? In a more broad sense, what did they do when they got over here uh, across the pond? Family of farmers. Family of farmers. Good old farmers. So uh, I want to know how your family was farming on the land that didn't belong to them. Why weren't they farming in England? You said what? You having the foggiest idea? They came and took somebody's land and began to farm in a better land, right. a land that's more suitable than England. That's right. England don't got a lot of good farmland, right? You know why? It's a piece of garbage. Right. See, it's a place that was good for your people, right? Because the way the weather is, it was conducive for your physiological makeup, right? So, but in, in all of that, it had bad land. So you came over here, stole land, stole people, and built an empire. That's what your people did. That's how the British Empire, that's how the Queen got so much power and money oh, and riches, right. man. Right. From theft. Oh. Right? So so how do you how yeah, the new Atlantis, right? So how do you feel about uh this new uh reparations bill that's being uh, uh drafted? You don't know about it? So so they're 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 what, what right now what they're doing is they're cultivating a reparations bill, right? So it, it could get passed, it could not get passed, but here's the thing. Now let's say it got passed, how would you feel about a reparations bill? You have no problem with it? But what if it affected you directly? Like, what if you had to suffer hardships as a result of it? I mean, what if what if um, there was, a let's say, a change in, in, in a working wage, a minimum wage, right? Where there was a higher minimum wage for black people and a lower minimum wage for white people. What about something like that? You prefer equality, right? But the problem is, it hasn't been equal for centuries, right? That's right. So in order for it to even out and become equal, you guys would, it, the only way it's going to be equal is you guys are going to have to take a cut. And they're going to have to give a little bit extra. Bring you see up. what I'm saying? That's the only way it's going to be equal. And then after, uh, maybe after a time of that, yeah. then maybe we can have actual equality. So how do you feel about that? Fair is fair. Fair is fair. Okay. Fair is fair. Let's, let's, hope you, let's hope you keep the same sentiments. Right? Uh, matter of fact, let me get just real quick. Uh, um, uh, Isaiah 14, 12. So there's a there's a reparations bill, right? Us up here, we don't believe in reparations, right? Not through that. I believe in reparations through blood. That's right. Okay? That's what I believe. Because that's what God believes. You are you religious at all? Yeah, what, what, what's your uh denomination? I was raised Catholic. You was raised Catholic, right? You practicing Catholic, you just go to church on Easter what? You said just on Easter, right? No. Oh. Oh, well, you go on Easter, right? You get ready for a big, big Easter in the month, right? What do you go to church in Easter Scotland? No, not originally. Not originally you live here now? What church you go to? I got St. Patrick's. Good old St. Patrick's, man. That's the same Catholic institution that Dr. David Lee. I'm at the steps of St. Patrick's Catholic Church here in Tacoma, Washington. Um, and this is the institution that indoctrinated me, the church I attended when I was uh, young and um, still enslaved to the heresy of the Catholic religion, the Roman Catholic religion. Um, and it was in this institution where, um, you know, I used to come in here on Sundays. Um, sometimes, you know, we'd have, we'd have spurts where we, we would be, you know, devout, so to speak, and we'd be here every week. And I went through um, catechism classes. I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not the actual name, just the name said. Not, not you know, the actual name, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai and things of that nature. That wasn't said, just the name, whatever. But no name was ever specified. But all in this, with the catechism classes of First Communion, all that right up in here. Um, for those of y'all that are familiar with Catholicism and, you know, the ins and outs of um, the Catholic, uh, you know, cult. You know, I went through all that right up in here. But it was in here where I used to come in and sit, um, sit in these pews, man. And um, look look up at, at Caesar Bolger, the white image of Christ, and have a problem. <laughs> I would have a, a, a problem with it. 
every week, you know, but I was sitting here, I didn't know what to do or, you know, how to express it or how to disprove it, but it just didn't sit right with me that that was the image of Christ. That's how Jesus Christ of the Bible, the one who died for my sins, looked like. Father Shane ain't there no more? No, he's not there. That's crazy, man. All right, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you something, man. That's, that's here in your Bible. 14. I said 14. I'm going to show you something here in your Bible, right? It's in your pew. You know, y'all don't, don't open it much at St. Patrick's, but it's in your pew, right? So read that. 14:21. God, the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 21. You know what? Prepare slaughter for his children. So God said prepare slaughter for his children. Why? Why are these children having slaughter prepared for them? Read. For the iniquity of their fathers. Because of what their foreparents did, right? So this principle is going to be applicable to you and your people. Slaughter is prepared for you for what your foreparents did. What those good English people did when they sailed across the pond. Slaughter is prepared for you. Read. That they do not rise. Uh, that they do not what? Nor rise. Y'all ain't going to be able to rise again, right? After Christ come back. Read. Nor possess the land. Nor possess. Y'all ain't gonna be able to come and possess a farm in America anymore, or any damn way. Rise, possess the land. Read. Nor fill the face of the world with cities. You're not gonna be able to have a Tacoma, or Seattle, or any damn way, because God is preparing a slaughter for your people That's for right. the iniquity of your foreparents. That's right. Like the white boy that's uh, featured so prominently in, in St. Patrick's Cathedral, right? But the actual God, the God of this Bible. See, so read. God, verse 22, uh -huh. for I will rise up against them, uh -huh. saith the Lord of hosts. That's right, he gonna rise up, he gonna rise up against you. He's rising up against your people, and how he's uh, starting that, that uprising against your people is still having us out here on these farms. That's, that's that, that, this is the way you just seeing us talk. We just some niggas talking on the porch, right? But when God actually rises against you, that's when you're gonna really see it. Oh, that's right. Okay. Right? That's what's coming soon. Ain't gonna be no St. Patrick's no Ain't gonna be none of this anymore. The Lord God is gonna wipe away all of this evil and simple place. Right. Because it's built in nothing but a nigga. Read on. Cut. And cut off from Babylon uh -huh. the name and raiment and son uh -huh. and nephew, saith the Lord. You think Jesus is white, man? I don't know. You don't know, boy. You got a white Jesus in St. Patrick's, though. He's your God, no. All right. And I'm gonna tell you something. I used to go to that St. Patrick's. I used to stare at that white Jesus and I used to go, nah, <laughs> that can't be it. And it, it just can't be it, right? Read. Cut. It's the book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. Do you believe in the perpetual virginity of Mary? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, the doctrine of the perpetual virginity of Mary is one of the funniest things in the world. You know Jesus had four siblings, right? Where they come from? <laughs> the perpetual virginity of Mary. Huh. Hey, what a doctrine. Go ahead. God is a spirit. <laughs> and they that worship him uh -huh. must worship him uh -huh. in spirit uh -huh. and in truth. In spirit and truth, the most high got to be worshipped. Not in the Trinity, not in a white boy on the cross. That's not how you worship the most high God. He's calling true worshipers to worship him. The worshipers are the Israelites, the so called black and Spanish people. People in the Catholic, Catholic institution are not the true worshipers of God, right? Or any of these churches. It could be the Christian, the Protestant, the Baptist, the Presbyterian, and Evangelical, whatever. They're not the true worshipers of God. You know what? God, verse 24. Uh -huh. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, uh -huh. which is called Christ. Uh -huh. when, he, when he is come, he will tell us all things. That's right. And that's who she was dealing with. Right? God. That's who she was dealing with at that time. Right? So let's go to John 7 and 38 real quick. John, John 7 and 38. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> I know you know, a lot of people can't read them, uh, that small print. So go ahead. Right. This is the book of John. Uh -huh. Chapter 7, verse 38. Read on. He that believeth on me, uh -huh. as the scripture hath said. As what? As the scripture hath said. The scripture ain't saying he was white. The scripture ain't saying nothing about a trinity. None of that's in the scripture. So Christ said, he didn't believe on me as the scripture have said, read on. Out of his belly uh -huh. shall flow rivers of living water. See, and that, that's why out of the belly of these churches is not no living water. All right, that's why the churches have yet to truly make any great change in any of our community or the world. Man. And the Catholic church, you a Catholic, the Catholic church. I mean, what, what name the institution that got more blood on its head? 
Bring it out. Everything, everything south of the border of Mexico, everything south of that, the Catholic Church has sponsored the genocide. Do you understand? Sponsor. And I mean, I mean, every other day it's another molestation scandal. The archdiocese is going, yeah, man. The archdiocese is finding out what it's it's a hundred thousand more rape victims, right? I mean, there's no institution that's got more blood in its hand. What 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 are you as a Catholic doing to get the blood off of your hands for the, the crimes of your institution? Nothing. Let me show you something. I'm gonna show you something easy, right? I grew up in this community, right? There was a time where I was coming around right in this area, right? Dropping off crack, right? You do? That happened, right? Now what am I doing to right that wrong? I come here and I teach the Bible and teach my people repent. This is how you right a wrong, right? So y'all as the Catholics, y'all gotta figure out how you gonna right all the wrong y'all and y'all gotta do something about it. <laughs> y'all can't just keep going to church on Sunday and that's it. Cause there's nothing that's being solved right there, sitting in that building. You guys got to go through all Latin America, you guys got to go to Asia, you guys got to go to Africa, you guys got to go everywhere and start fixing murder, start fixing rape, start fixing exploitation and death. You got to literally start fixing that. What's going on? Oh yeah, okay, just make sure. I, I feel these brothers do, man. Just had to make sure, man. You know what I'm saying? Where you was headed to, man? Oh, you headed home, you live down the street. How long have you been living around here? Six, seven years? Where'd you at? Give me Revelation 13. Come on, let's go there. Give me Revelation 13 and one more. One more for the captain. Hey, he's on. He's on, go. Go ahead. <laughs> this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Uh huh. Verse 10. Read on. He that leadeth into the It's the word of Christ, right? Yeah. This is what he said. He said, He that leadeth. Read on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Read on. He that leadeth into captivity. You lead people into captivity. Read. Shall go into captivity. You got to go into captivity, man. The English man in the Catholic, you got a double win. Your English and your Catholic. Led into captivity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Read. You got to go into it. That's what that means. Read. He that killeth with the sword. Uh huh. Must be killed with the sword. And this is Catholic. Who's killed more than y'all? So you gotta be killed with the sword. That's, huh? right. That's the word of Christ. Read. God, here's the patience uh -huh. and the faith of the saints. That's right. So the saints of God are patiently and faithfully waiting for that to happen. Right? They're not in church on Easter Sunday. Right? They're patiently and faithfully waiting for the people that enslaved them to be enslaved and the people that murdered them to be killed. Huh? All right, righteously. All right, and that's what who you call Jesus Christ. He's not a white man for the record. That's what he's coming to do. He's coming to destroy your people.